Hello YouTube, this is Daryl at HudsonsCustomMachining.com. I've got something a little bit different today for those of you who may follow me with the antique fan repair and restoration that I do here in the shop. I'm also an amateur radio operator. My call sign is Kilo Delta 4 Golf Echo, that's KD4GE. And I've got a uh, little project here that I wanted to show a friend of mine and I thought, well, we'll just uh, do a little video. Now this is not a how to build uh, video. This is more of a, hey, check this out. And uh, this is primarily to the, the guys that are uh, new to ham radio and probably just hold a technician class uh, license. You're probably operating on the two meter band, 144 megahertz. And uh, uh, your first radio is probably a uh, handy talkie, uh, walkie talkie type uh, radio. Uh, and uh, they come with a little short uh, antenna. We call it a rubber ducky antenna that's about six inches long or so. And it's sort of a compromised antenna. And to help get out a little bit further on those little handheld ham radios, you can take a SO239 connector like this. This is just a SO239 and some 14 gauge wire. Now you'll wanna use solid wire uh, like this. This is uh, just wire that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or strip out of an old appliance, an uh, old junk appliance or something. But you want to be sure and use the, the solid wire so that it'll stay whenever you bend it, it'll stay put. Uh, the stranded wire will not, will not stay if you try to bend it, it'll, it'll try to straighten back out. So you want to use solid wire and uh, this wire doesn't even have to be, uh, you can see it's got some kinks in it along the way. But here's my antenna. Check this out. What you'll need is an SO239 connector like this. They're just a few bucks. You can get them uh, online. A uh, ham radio outlet has them. Uh, you'll need the SO239 connector and you'll need five pieces of 19 and a quarter inch long 14 gauge wire. So here's the top of my wire. It's 19 inches from here at the end down to the bottom here where I have this soldered in. Now what you'll want to do is take your center conductor and skin it back, skin the insulation back about three eighths of an inch so that it'll fit down, come on focus, so it'll fit down into this center uh, conductor here. Drop you some solder down in there and you'll see on mine after I soldered it in place I put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on here I just put that heat shrink on there to keep uh, water out if I'm out camping or out in the field somewhere and it starts to rain. This will make it a little bit more weatherproof. Now these are just 632 screws. These happen to be socket head screws that I had in my drawer just because they were readily available. That's what I use, but they don't have to be socket heads. You don't even have to use the, the ring terminals on the end. Uh, I crimp these ring terminals on the end of my four radials here. Uh, but you can just skin the insulation back and put a hook in your uh, put a hook in your wire and wrap it around here. Uh, that's that's plenty good enough also. Now you'll want these radials to be about a 45 degree angle. Uh, coming, you'll you'll want these radials to come down about a 45 degree angle. You don't want them sticking out straight. And uh, what I do to get this up in the in the tree or to get it up. You can either bend the top end of your center conductor here, you can bend a hook in it, and you can pull it up with a string or a rope over a tree limb or something, or you can take a piece of PVC pipe. And I've usually got a stick of PVC pipe rolling around in the back of my pickup truck. This is a piece of three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe. And you're gonna be using that small diameter coax, uh, RG8, 8X or whatever. I run it up through the center of my, my pipe here so that my, my coax, the end of my coax comes out the end right here. And I just uh, screw this on to the end of my coax and, and this will sit right down on there just like that. It'll sit right down on there. And then when you stand this up, get it up uh, 10 feet or so, you'll be surprised at what a difference it'll make with the signal on those little handy talkies. And don't worry about the, uh, the little bit of bend in here is not gonna hurt anything if it's not perfectly straight. Uh, I fold this up. The reason mine looks so, so kink, kinked up through here, I keep this in my backpack. 
And when I get ready to put it away, I just fold it up. Fold it up. You can take this top bench, this top conductor here. Now don't try to bend it down too close to where you've got it soldered, but maybe up a couple of inches. I just fold this thing over. And if you want to fold it up further, still fold it again. <clears throat> and this thing fits uh, in a backpack. You can stash it under the seat of your truck. I keep one of these little connect, these little, uh, it's just a little end cap. I don't know, this come off of a, uh, a piece of tubing or something. You'll find them a lot of times on a, maybe the foot of a, a, a chair or something. I found one that just happens to be the right size to fit on the here, so that whenever I'm out, I've already folded this up, I'll show you how it fits on here. I put it on there just to keep dirt out whenever I'm, uh, whenever I've got this rolling around in my, in my knapsack. It just fits on there and uh, keeps, keeps the dirt from getting up in there. So anyway, it's a nice little project. You can go out this weekend, find you some old scrap wire. SO239 connector is probably the only thing you'll have to buy, and those are just a few dollars. And go out and make one of these this weekend. It's a fun little project, and it'll help your handheld, handy talkie two meter ham radio get out uh, and maybe hit the repeater a little bit better. All right, this is KD4GE signing out. Y'all take care.